Chapter 1 The National Airspace System Introduction The National Airspace System, NAS, is the network of United States airspace, air navigation facilities, equipment, services, airports or landing areas, aeronautical charts, information slash services, rules, regulations, procedures, technical information, manpower, and material. Included are system components shared jointly with the military. The system's present configuration is a reflection of the technological advances concerning the speed and altitude capability of jet aircraft, as well as the complexity of microchip and satellite-based navigation equipment. To conform to international aviation standards, the United States adopted the primary elements of the classification system developed by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. This chapter is a general discussion of airspace classification, on route, terminal, and approach procedures, and operations within the NAS. Detailed information on the classification of airspace, operating procedures, and restrictions is found in the Aeronautical Information Manual, AIM. Airspace classification airspace in the United States, figure 1-1, is designated as follows, 1. Class A. Generally, airspace from 18,000 feet mean sea level, MSL, up to and including flight level, FL, 600, including the airspace overlying the waters within 12 nautical miles, NM, of the coast of the 48 contiguous states and Alaska. Unless otherwise authorized, all pilots must operate their aircraft under instrument flight rules, IFR. 2. Class B. Generally, airspace from the surface to 10,000 feet MSL surrounding the nation's busiest airports in terms of airport operations or passenger employments. The configuration of each Class B airspace area is individually tailored, consists of a surface area and two or more layers, some Class B airspace areas resemble upside-down wedding cakes, and is designed to contain all published instrument procedures once an aircraft enters the airspace. An air traffic control, ATC, clearance is required for all aircraft to operate in the area, and all aircraft that are so cleared receive separation services within the airspace. 3. Class C. Generally, airspace from the surface to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation, charted in MSL, Surrounding those airports that have an operational control tower are serviced by a radar approach control and have a certain number of IFR operations or passenger employments. Although the configuration of each Class C area is individually tailored, the airspace usually consists of a surface area with a 5 nm radius, an outer circle with a 10 nm radius that extends from 1,200 feet to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation and an outer area. Each aircraft must establish two-way radio communications with the ATC facility providing air traffic services prior to entering the airspace and thereafter maintain those communications while within the airspace. 4. Class D. Generally, airspace from the surface to 2,500 feet above the airport elevation, charted in MSL, surrounding those airports that have an operational control tower. The configuration of each Class D airspace area is individually tailored in, when instrument procedures are published, the airspace normally designed to contain the procedures. Arrival extensions for instrument approach procedures, IAPS, may be Class D or Class E airspace. Unless otherwise authorized, each aircraft must establish two-way radio communications with the ATC facility providing air traffic services prior to entering the airspace and thereafter maintain those communications while in the airspace. 5. Class E. Generally, if the airspace is not Class A, B, C, or D and is controlled airspace, then it is Class E airspace. Class E airspace extends upward from either the surface or a designated altitude to the overlying or adjacent controlled airspace. When designated as a surface area, the airspace is configured to contain all instrument procedures. Also in this class are federal airways, airspace beginning at either 700 or 1,200 feet above ground level, AGL, used to transition to and from the terminal or on-route environment and on-route domestic and offshore airspace areas designated below 18,000 feet MSL. Unless designated at a lower altitude, Class E airspace begins at 14,500 MSL over the United States, including that airspace overlying the waters within 12 nautical miles of the coast of the 48 contiguous states and Alaska, up to but not including 18,000 feet MSL, and the airspace above FL 600. 6. Class G. Airspace not designated as Class A, B, C, D, or E Class G airspace is essentially uncontrolled by ATC except when associated with a temporary control tower. 
Special Use Airspace Special Use Airspace is the designation for airspace in which certain activities must be confined or where limitations may be imposed on aircraft operations that are not part of those activities. Certain Special Use Airspace areas can create limitations on the mixed use of airspace. The Special Use Airspace depicted on instrument charts includes the area name or number, effective altitude, time and weather conditions of operation, the controlling agency, and the chart panel location. On National Aeronautical Navigation Products, AeroNav Products, on route charts, this information is available on one of the end panels. Prohibited areas contain airspace of defined dimensions within which the flight of aircraft is prohibited. Such areas are established for security or other reasons associated with the national welfare. These areas are published in the Federal Register and are depicted on aeronautical charts. The area is charted as a P followed by a number, for example, P-123. Restricted areas are areas where operations are hazardous to non-participating aircraft and contain airspace within which the flight of aircraft, while not wholly prohibited, is subject to restrictions. Activities within these areas must be confined because of their nature, or limitations may be imposed upon aircraft operations that are not a part of those activities, or both. Restricted areas denote the existence of unusual, often invisible, hazards to aircraft, for example, artillery firing, aerial gunnery, or guided missiles. IFR flights may be authorized to transit the airspace and are routed accordingly. Penetration Of restricted areas without authorization from the using or controlling agency may be extremely hazardous to the aircraft and its occupants. ATC facilities apply the following procedures when aircraft are operating on an IFR clearance, including those cleared by ATC to maintain visual flight rules, VFR on top, via a route that lies within joint use restricted airspace. 1. If the restricted area is not active and has been released to the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, the ATC facility will allow the aircraft to operate in the restricted airspace without issuing specific clearance for it to do so. 2. If the restricted area is active and has not been released to the FAA, the ATC facility will issue a clearance that will ensure the aircraft avoids the restricted airspace. Restricted areas are charted with an R followed by a number, for example, R5701, and are depicted on the on-route chart appropriate for use at the altitude or FL being flown. Warning areas are similar in nature to restricted areas, however, the U.S. government does not have sole jurisdiction over the airspace. A warning area is airspace of defined dimensions, extending from 12 nautical miles outward from the coast of the United States, containing activity that may be hazardous to non-participating aircraft. The purpose of such areas is to warn non-participating pilots of the potential danger. A warning area may be located over domestic or international waters or both. The airspace is designated with a W followed by a number, for example, W-123. Military Operations Areas, MOAs, consist of airspace with defined vertical and lateral limits established for the purpose of separating certain military training activities from IFR traffic. Whenever an MOA is being used, non-participating IFR traffic may be cleared through an MOA if IFR separation can be provided by ATC. Otherwise, ATC will reroute or restrict non-participating IFR traffic. MOAs are depicted on sectional, VFR terminal area, and on route low altitude charts and are not numbered, for example, Boardman MOA. Alert areas are depicted on aeronautical charts with an A followed by a number, for example, A-123, to inform non-participating pilots of areas that may contain a high volume of pilot training or an unusual type of aerial activity. Pilots should exercise caution in alert areas. All activity within an alert area shall be conducted in accordance with regulations, without waiver, and pilots of participating aircraft, as well as pilots transiting the area, shall be equally responsible for collision avoidance. Military training routes, MTRs, are routes used by military aircraft to maintain proficiency in tactical flying. These routes are usually established below 10,000 feet MSL for operations at speeds in excess of 250 knots. Some route segments may be defined at higher altitudes for purposes of route continuity. Routes are identified as IFR, IR, and VFR, VR, followed by a number. MTRs with no segment above 1,500 feet AGL are identified by four number characters, for example, IR-1206, VR-1207. MTRs that include one or more segments above 1,500 feet AGL are identified by three number characters, for example, IR-206, VR-207. 
IFR low altitude on route charts depict all IR routes and all VR routes that accommodate operations above 1,500 feet AGL. IR routes are conducted in accordance with IFR regardless of weather conditions. Temporary flight restrictions, TFRs, are put into effect when traffic in the airspace would endanger or hamper air or ground activities in the designated area. For example, a forest fire, chemical accident flood, or disaster relief effort could warrant a TFR, which would be issued as a notice to airmen notum. National Security Areas, NSAs, consist of airspace with defined vertical and lateral dimensions established at locations where there is a requirement for increased security and safety of ground facilities. Flight in NSAs may be temporarily prohibited by regulation under the provisions of Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 14 CFR, Part 99 and prohibitions will be disseminated via NOTAM. Federal Airways The primary means for routing aircraft operating under IFR is the Federal Airways System. Each Federal Airway is based on a centerline that extends from one navigational aid, navaid slash waypoint slash fix slash intersection to another navaid slash waypoint slash fix slash intersection specified for that airway. A Federal Airway includes the airspace within parallel boundary lines for NM to each side of the centerline. As in all instrument flight, courses are magnetic, and distances are in NM. The airspace of a federal airway has a floor of 1,200 feet AGL, unless otherwise specified. A federal airway does not include the airspace of a prohibited area. Victor airways include the airspace extending from 1,200 feet AGL up to, but not including 18,000 feet MSL. The airways are designated on sectional and IFR low altitude on route charts with the letter V followed by a number, for example, V23. Typically, Victor Airways are given odd numbers when oriented north-slash-south and even numbers when oriented east-slash-west. If more than one airway coincides on a route segment, the numbers are listed serially, for example, V287-495-500. Figure 1-2 Jet routes exist only in Class A airspace, from 18,000 feet MSL to FL450, and are depicted on high altitude on route charts. The letter J precedes a number to label the airway, for example, J12. Area Navigation, RNAV, routes have been established in both the low-altitude and the high-altitude structures in recent years, and are depicted on the on-route low and high chart series. High-altitude RNAV routes are identified with a Q prefix, except the Q routes in the Gulf of Mexico, and low-altitude RNAV routes are identified with a T prefix. RNAV routes and data are depicted in aeronautical blue. In addition to the published routes, a random run of route may be flown under IFR if it is approved by ATC. Random run of routes are direct routes, based on RIF capability, between waypoints defined in terms of latitude slash longitude coordinates, degree distance fixes, or offsets from established routes slash airways at a specified distance and direction. Radar monitoring by ATC is required on all random run of routes. These routes can only be approved in a radar environment. Factors that are considered by ATC in approving random run of routes include the capability to provide radar monitoring and compatibility with traffic volume and flow. ATC will radar monitor each flight, however, navigation on the random run of route is the responsibility of the pilot. Other routing preferred IFR routes have been established between major terminals to guide pilots in planning their routes of flight, minimizing route changes, and aiding in the orderly management of air traffic on federal airways. Low and high altitude preferred routes are listed in the airport slash facility directory, A slash FD. To use a preferred route, reference the departure and arrival airports. If a routing exists for your flight, then airway instructions are listed. Tower on Route Control, TEC, is an ATC program that uses overlapping approach control radar services to provide IFR clearances. By using TEC, a pilot is routed by airport control towers. Some advantages include abbreviated filing procedures and reduced traffic separation requirements. Tech is dependent upon the ATC's workload, and the procedure varies among locales. The latest version of Advisory Circular, AC, 90-91, North American Route Program, NRP, provides guidance to users of the NAS for participation in the NRP. All flights operating at or above FL290 within the conterminous United States and Canada are eligible to participate in the NRP, the primary purpose of which is to allow operators to plan minimum time-slash-cost routes that may be off the prescribed route structure. NRP aircraft are not subject to route-limiting restrictions, for example, published preferred IFR routes, beyond a 200 nautical miles radius of their point of departure or destination. 
IFR on route charts The objective of IFR on route flight is to navigate within the lateral limits of a designated airway at an altitude consistent with the ATC clearance. Your ability to fly instruments safely and competently in the system is greatly enhanced by understanding the vast array of data available to the pilot on instrument charts. Aeronav Products maintains and produces the charts for the U.S. government. On route high altitude charts provide aeronautical information for on route instrument navigation at or above 18,000 feet MSL. Information includes the portrayal of jet and rear routes, identification and frequencies of radio aids, selected airports, distances, time zones, special use airspace, and related information. Establish jet routes from 18,000 feet MSL to FL450 use navids not more than 260 nautical miles apart. The charts are revised every 56 days. To effectively depart from one airport and navigate on route under instrument conditions, a pilot needs the appropriate IFR on route low altitude charts. The IFR low altitude on route chart is the instrument equivalent of the sectional chart. When folded, the cover of the Aeronav products on route chart displays an index map of the United States showing the coverage areas. Cities near congested airspace are shown in black type and their associated area chart is listed in the box in the lower left-hand corner of the map coverage box. Also noted is an explanation of the off-route obstruction clearance altitude, or AUCA. The effective date of the chart is printed on the other side of the folded chart. Information concerning MTRs is also included on the chart cover. The on-route charts are revised every 56 days. When the Aeronav products on-route chart is unfolded, the legend is displayed and provides information concerning airports, nav aids, communications, air traffic services, and airspace. Airport information Airport information is provided in the legend, and the symbols used for the airport name, elevation, and runway length are similar to the sectional chart presentation. Associated city names are shown for public airports only. FAA identifiers are shown for all airports. ICAO identifiers are also shown for airports outside of the contiguous United States. Instrument approaches can be found at airports with blue or green symbols, while the brown airport symbol denotes airports that do not have instrument approaches. Stars are used to indicate the part-time nature of tower operations, automatic terminal information service, ATIS, frequencies, part-time or on-request lighting facilities, and part-time airspace classifications. A box after an airport name, indicates class C and D with a C or D inside, for example, airspace, respectively, per figure 1-3. Chart at IFR altitudes the minimum on-route altitude, MEA, ensures a navigation signal strong enough for adequate reception by the aircraft navigation, NAV, receiver and obstacle clearance along the airway. Communication is not necessarily guaranteed with MEA compliance. The obstacle clearance, within the limits of the airway, is typically 1,000 feet in non-mountainous areas and 2,000 feet in designated mountainous areas. MEAs can be authorized with breaks in the signal coverage. If this is the case, the Aeronav products on route chart notes may a gap parallel to the affected airway. Mayas are usually bidirectional, however, they can be single directional. Arrows are used to indicate the direction to which the Maya applies. The minimum obstruction clearance altitude, MOCA, as the name suggests, provides the same obstruction clearance as in Maya, however, the NAV signal reception is ensured only within 22 nautical miles of the closest NAV aid defining the route. The MOCA is listed below the MEA and indicated on Aeronav products charts by a leading asterisk, for example, 3400 C figure 12, V287 at bottom left. The minimum reception altitude, MRA, identifies the lowest altitude at which an intersection can be determined from an off-course navid. If the reception is line of sight based, signal coverage only extends to the MRA or above. However, if the aircraft is equipped with distance measuring equipment, DME, and the chart indicates the intersection can be identified with such equipment, the pilot could define the fix without attaining the MRA. On Aeronav products charts, and the altitude the MRA is indicated by the symbol preceded by MRA, for example, MRA 9300. Figure 1-2, the minimum crossing altitude, MCA, is charted when a higher MEA route segment is approached. The MCA is usually indicated when a pilot is approaching steeply rising terrain and obstacle clearance and or signal reception is compromised. In this case, the pilot is required to initiate a climb so the MCA is reached by the time the intersection is crossed. On Aeronav products charts, the MCA is indicated by the symbol, and the Victor airway number, altitude, and the direction to which it applies, for example. V24 8000 SE. 
The maximum authorized altitude, MAA, is the highest altitude at which the airway can be flown with assurance of receiving adequate navigation signals. Chart depictions appear as MA 15000. When in MAA, MOCA, and or MA change on a segment other than at a navade, a sideways T is depicted on the chart. If there is an airway break without the symbol, one can assume the altitudes have not changed, see the upper left area of figure 1 2. When a change of MAA to a higher MAA is required, the climb may commence at the break, ensuring obstacle clearance. Figure 1 4, navigation features types of navades very high frequency omnidirectional ranges VORS, are the principal navades that support the Victor and Jet Airways. Many other navigation tools are also available to the pilot. For example, non-directional beacons, NDBs, can broadcast signals accurate enough to provide standalone approaches, and DME allows the pilot to pinpoint a reporting point on the airway. Though primarily navigation tools, these navades can also transmit voice broadcasts. Tactical air navigation tech and channels are represented as the two or three digit numbers following the three letter identifier in the navade boxes. The Aeronav products terminal procedures provide a frequency pairing table for the TAC and only sites. On Aeronav products charts, very high frequencies, ultra high frequencies, VHF slash UHF, navades, for example, VORS, are depicted in black, while low frequencies and medium frequencies, LF slash MF, are depicted as brown. Figure 1 5, identifying intersections. Intersections along the airway route are established by a variety of navades. An open triangle indicates the location of an ATC reporting point at an intersection. If the triangle is solid, a report is compulsory. Figure 1-4, NDBs, localizers. And off-route VORs are used to establish intersections. NDBs are sometimes collocated with intersections, in which case passage of the NDB would mark the intersection. A bearing to an off-route NDB also can provide intersection identification. A localizer course used to identify an intersection is depicted by a feathered arrowhead symbol on the on-route chart. If feathered markings appear on a back course, VC signal is transmitted. On Aeronav products on-route charts, the localizer symbol is only depicted to identify an intersection. Off-route VORs remain the most common means of identifying intersections when traveling on an airway. Arrows depicted next to the intersection indicate the navi to be used for identification. Another means of identifying an intersection is with the use of DME. A hollow arrowhead indicates DME is authorized for intersection identification. If the DME mileage at the intersection is a cumulative distance of route segments, the mileage is totaled and indicated by a D-shaped symbol with a mileage number inside. Figure 1-4, Approved IFR Global Positioning System, GPS, units can also be used to report intersections. Other route information DME and GPS provide valuable route information concerning such factors as mileage, position, and ground speed. Even without this equipment, information is provided on the charts for making the necessary calculations using time and distance. The on-route chart depicts point-to-point -point distances on the airway system. Distances from VOR to VOR are charted with a number inside of a box. To differentiate distances when two airways coincide, the word to with the three-letter VOR. Identifier appear to the left of the distance boxes VOR changeover points, COPS, are depicted on the charts by this symbol. The numbers indicate the distance at which to change the VOR frequency. The frequency change might be required due to signal reception or conflicting frequencies. If a COP does not appear on an airway, the frequency should be changed midway between the facilities. A COP at an intersection may indicate a course change. Occasionally an X appears at a separated segment of an airway that is not an intersection. The X is a mileage breakdown or computer navigation fix and may indicate a course change. Today's computerized system of ATC has greatly reduced the need for holding on route. However, published holding patterns are still found on charts at junctures where ATC has deemed it necessary to enable traffic flow. When a holding pattern is charted, holding pattern the controller may provide the holding direction and the statement is published. Figure 1-4, boundaries separating the jurisdiction of air route traffic control centers, ARC, are depicted on charts with blue. The name of the controlling serrations depicted as blue serrated boxes and contain the center name, sector name, and the sector frequency. Figure 1-4, weather information and communication features on route navades also provide weather information and serve communication functions. When a navade is shown as a shadowed box, an automated flight service station, AFSS, of the same name is directly associated with the facility. 
If an AFSS is located without an associated NAVIG, the shadowed box is smaller and contains only the name and identifier. The AFSS frequencies are provided above the box. Frequencies 122.2 and 255.4, and emergency frequencies 121.5 and 243.0 are not listed. A remote communications outlet, RCO, associated with a NAVIT is designated by a thin line box with the controlling AFSS frequency above the box and the name under the box. Without an associated facility, the thin-lined RCO box contains the AFSS name and remote frequency. Automated Surface Observing Station, ASOS, Automated Weather Observing Station, AWOS, Hazardous In-Flight Weather Advisory Service, HIWAS, and Transcribed Weather Broadcast, TWEB, are continuously transmitted over selected NAVAIDs and depicted in the NAVAID box. ASIS slash AWOS are depicted by a white A, HIWAS by a H and TWEB broadcasts by a T in a solid black circle in the upper right or left corner. New technologies technological advances have made multifunction displays and moving maps more common in newer aircraft. Even older aircraft are being retrofitted to include glass in the flight deck. Figure 1-6, Moving Maps Improve Pilot Situational Awareness, SA, by providing a picture of aircraft location in relation to nevades, waypoints, airspace, terrain, and WPT underscore 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 dis underscore 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 NMDTK underscore 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 degree TRK 360 degrees NAV 1 108.00 113.00 NAV 2 108.00 110.60 130 120.110 80 13.770 TAS 100 KT 200 1652138 map figure 1 6 Moving map display. Hazardous weather. GPS systems can be certified for terminal area and on route use as well as approach guidance. Additional breakthroughs in display technology are the new electronic chart systems or electronic flight bags that facilitate the use of electronic documents in the general aviation flight deck. Figure 1 to 7. An electronic chart or flight bag is a self powered electronic library that stores and displays on route charts and other essential documents on a screen. These electronic devices can store the digitized United States terminal procedures, on route charts, the complete A-FD, in addition to 14 CFR and the AIM. Full touchscreen-based computers allow pilots to view airport approach and area charts electronically while flying. With FAA approval, an operator may replace paper charts as well as other paper materials including minimum equipment lists, MELs, standard operating procedures, SOPs, standard instrument departures, SIDS, standard terminal arrival routes, stars, checklists, and flight deck manuals. As with paper flight publications, the electronic database needs to be current to provide accurate information regarding the VADES, waypoints, and terminal procedures. Databases are updated every 28 days and are available from various commercial vendors. Pilots should be familiar with equipment operation, capabilities, and limitations prior to use. 134.000 118.000 COM 1 123.800 118.000 CO 2 3000 XPDR 5537 IDNT LCL 23 colon 00 colon 34 3200 DCLTR MFD provide navigation information, moving map figure 17. Example of an electronic flight bag. Terminal procedures publications while the on-route charts provide the information necessary to safely transit broad regions of airspace, the United States Terminal Procedures Publication, TPP, enables pilots to guide their aircraft in the airport area. Whether departing or arriving, these procedures exist to make the controllers and pilots' jobs safer and more efficient. Available in booklets by region, published by Aeronav Products, the TPP includes approach procedures, stars, departure procedures, DPs, and airport diagrams. Departure procedures There are two types of DPs, Obstacle Departure Procedures, ODP and SIDS. Figure 1-8 Both types of DPs provide obstacle clearance protection to aircraft in instrument meteorological conditions, IMC, while reducing communications and departure delays. DPs are published in text and or charted graphic form. Regardless of the format, 
all DPs provide a way to depart the airport and transition to the on-route structure safely. When possible, pilots are strongly encouraged to file and fly a DP at night, during Marginal Visual Meteorological Conditions, VMC and IMC. All DPs provide obstacle clearance provided the aircraft crosses the end of the runway at least 35 feet AGL, climbs to 400 feet above airport elevation before turning, and climbs at least 200 feet per nautical mile, FPNM, unless a higher climb gradient is specified to the assigned altitude. ATC may vector an aircraft off a previously assigned DP, however, the 200 FPNM or the FPNM specified in the DP is required. Textual ODPs are listed by city and airport in the IFR takeoff minimums and DP section of the TPP. SIDs are depicted in the TPP following the approach procedures for the airport. Standard terminal arrival route stars depict prescribed routes to transition the instrument pilot from the on-route structure to a fix in the terminal area from which an instrument approach can be conducted. If a pilot does not have the appropriate star, write no star in the flight plan. However, if the controller is busy, the pilot might be cleared along the same route and, if necessary, the controller has the pilot copy the entire text of the procedure. Stars are listed alphabetically at the beginning of the AeroNav products booklet. Figure 1-9 shows an example of a star, and the legend for stars and DPs printed in AeroNav products booklets. Instrument Approach Procedure charts the Instrument Approach Procedure, IAP, chart provides the method to descend and land safely in low visibility conditions. The FAA establishes an IAP after thorough analyses of obstructions, terrain features, and navigational facilities. Maneuvers, including altitude changes, course corrections, and other limitations, are prescribed in the IAP. The approach charts reflect the criteria associated with the United States Standard for Terminal Instrument Approach Procedures, TERPS, which prescribes standardized methods for use in designing instrument flight procedures. In addition to the AeroNav products, other governmental and corporate entities produce approach procedures. The U.S. military IAPs are established and published by the Department of Defense and are available to the public upon request. Special IAPs are approved by the FAA for individual operators and are not available to the general public. Foreign country standard IAPs are established and published according to the individual country's publication procedures. The information presented in the following sections highlight features of the United States TPP. The instrument approach chart is divided into six main sections, which include the margin identification, pilot briefing, and notes, plan view, profile view, landing minimums, and airport diagram. Figure 1-10, to an examination of each section follows. Margin identification The margin identification, at the top and bottom of the chart, depicts the airport location and procedure identification. The civil approach plates are organized by city, then airport name and state. For example, Orlando Executive in Orlando, Florida, is alphabetically listed under O for Orlando. Military approaches are organized by airport name first. The chart's amendment status appears below the city and state in the bottom margin. The amendment number is followed by the five-digit Julian date of the last chart change. 05300 is read, the 300th day of 2005. At the center of the top margin is the FAA chart reference number in the approving authority. At the bottom center, the airport's latitude and longitude coordinates are provided. If a chart is original, the date of issuance can be used instead of the Julian date. The procedure chart title, top and bottom margin area of figure 110, is derived from the type of navigational facility providing final approach course guidance. A runway number is listed when the approach course is aligned within 30 degrees of the runway centerline. This type of approach allows a straight and landing under the right conditions. The type of approach followed by a letter identifies approaches that do not have straight and landing minimums. Examples include procedure titles at the same airport, which have only circling minimums. The first approach of this type created. Dot. DIS. S E R U T R A P E D T N E M U R T S N I D R A D N A T S D N A P D O S E R U D E C O R P E R U T R A P E D E L C A T S B O A to one E R U G I F dot R A T S D N A D N E G E L T R A H C P D nine to one E R U G I F At the airport is labeled with the letter A, and the lettering continues in alphabetical order, for example, BOR A or LDAB. The letter designation signifies the expectation is for the procedure to culminate in a circling approach to land. 
As a general rule, circling only approaches are designed for one of the two following reasons. The final approach course alignment with the runway centerline exceeds 30 degrees. The descent gradient is greater than 400 FPNM from the final approach fix, FAF, to the threshold crossing height, TCH. When this maximum gradient is exceeded, the circling only approach procedure may be designed to meet the gradient criteria limits. Further information on this topic can be found in the Instrument Procedures Handbook, Chapter 4, under Approach Naming Chart Conventions. To distinguish between the left, right, and center runways, an L, R, or C follows the runway number, for example, ILSRWI-16R. In some cases, an airport might have more than one circling approach, shown as VOR-A, VOR-DMEB, etc. More than one navigational system separated by a slash indicates more than one type of equipment is required to execute the final approach, for example, VOR-DMERWI-31. More than one navigational system separated by or indicates either type of equipment may be used to execute the final approach, for example, VOR or GPS RWI-15. Multiple approaches of the same type, to the same runway and using the same guidance, have an additional letter from the end of the alphabet number, or term in the title, for example, ILS ERWI-28, Silver ILS RWI-28, or ILS 2 RWI-28. VOR slash DME of approaches are identified as VOR slash DME of RWI, runway number. Helicopters have special IFs designated with copter in the procedure identification, for example, copter lock slash DME 25 liters. Other types of navigation systems may be required to execute other portions of the approach prior to intercepting the final approach segment or during the missed approach. The pilot briefing The pilot briefing is located at the top of the chart and provides the pilot with information required to complete the published approach procedure. Included in the pilot briefing are the NAVAID providing approach guidance, its frequency, the final approach course, and runway information. A notes section contains additional procedural information. For example, a procedural note might indicate restrictions for circling maneuvers. Some other notes might concern a local altimeter setting and the resulting change in the minimums. The use of radar may also be noted in this section. Additional notes may be found in the plan view. Appears in the notes when a triangle containing a T section, it signifies the airport has non-standard IFR takeoff minimums. Pilots should refer to the DP section of the TPP to determine takeoff minimums. Appears in the notes when a triangle containing an A section, it signifies the airport has non-standard IFR alternate minimums. Civil pilots should refer to the alternate minimum section of the TPP to determine alternate minimums. Military pilots should refer to appropriate regulations. When a triangle containing an A NA appears in the notes area, it signifies that alternate minimums are not authorized due to unmonitored facility or the absence of weather reporting service. Communication frequencies are listed in the order in which they would be used during the approach. Frequencies for weather and related facilities are included, where applicable, such as ATIS, ASIS, OOS, and AFSSs. The plan view The plan view provides a graphical overhead view of the procedure and depicts the routes that guide the pilot from the on route segments to the initial approach fix, IAF. Figure 1 to 10, during the initial approach, the aircraft has departed the on-route phase of flight and is maneuvering to enter an intermediate or final segment of the instrument approach. An initial approach can be made along prescribed routes within the terminal area, which may be along an arc, radial, course heading, radar vector, or a combination thereof. Procedure turns and high-altitude teardrop penetrations are initial approach segments. Features of the plan view, including the procedure turn, obstacle elevation, minimum safe altitude, MSA, and procedure track are depicted in Figure 111. Terrain is depicted in the plan view portion of all IAPs if the terrain within the plan view exceeds 4,000 feet above the airport elevation, or if within a 6 nautical miles radius of the airport reference point the terrain rises at least 2,000 feet above the airport elevation. Some Aeronav products charts contain a reference or distance circle with a specified radius, 10 nm is most common. Normally, approach features within the plan view are shown to scale, however, only the data within the reference circle is always drawn to scale. Concentric dashed circles, or concentric rings around the distance circle, are used when the information necessary to the procedure will not fit to scale within the limits of the plan view area. They serve as a means to systematically arrange this information in its relative position outside and beyond the reference circle. These concentric rings are labeled on route facilities and feeder facilities. 
.sdn e g e l l o b m y s d n a w e i v n a l p p a i 1 1 to 1 e r u g i f The primary airport depicted in the plan view is drawn with enough detail to show the runway orientation and final, approach course alignment. Airports other than the primary approach airport are not normally depicted in the AeroNav products plan view. Known spot elevations are indicated on the plan view with a dot in MSL altitude. The largest dot and number combination indicates the highest elevation. An inverted V with a dot in the center depicts an obstacle. The highest obstacle is indicated with a bolder, larger version of the same symbol. Figure 111, the MSA circle appears in the plan view, except in approaches for which the terminal arrival area, TAA, format is used or appropriate nav aids, for example, BOR or NDV, are unavailable. The MSA is provided for emergency purposes only and guarantees 1,000 feet obstruction clearance in the sector indicated with reference to the bearings in the circle. For conventional navigation systems, the MSA is normally based on the primary omnidirectional facility nav aid, on which the IAP is predicated. The MSA depiction on the approach chart contains the facility identifier of the NAVID used to determine the MSA altitudes. For of approaches, the MSA is based on the runway waypoint for straight and approaches or the airport waypoint for circling approaches. For GPS approaches, the MSA center header is the missed approach waypoint. The MSL altitudes appear in boxes within the circle, which is typically a 25 nautical miles radius unless otherwise indicated. The MSA circle header refers to the letter identifier of the NAVAID or waypoint that describes the center of the circle. NAVAIDs necessary for the completion of the instrument procedure include the facility name, letter identifier, and Morse code sequence. They may also furnish the frequency, Morse code, and channel. A heavy line NAVAID box depicts the primary NAVAID used for the approach. An I in front of the NAVAID identifier, in figure 1 to 11, IAVL, listed in the NAVAID box indicates a localizer. The requirement for an ADF, DME, or radar in the approach is noted in the plan view. Intersections, fixes, radials, and course lines describe route and approach sequencing information. The main procedure or final approach course is a thick, solid line. A DME arc, which is part of the main procedure course. A is also represented as a thick, solid line, and feeder route is depicted with a medium line, provides heading, altitude, and distance information. All three components must be designated on the chart to provide a navigable course. Radials, such as lead radials, are shown. The missed approach track is drawn by thin lines, using a thin, hash-marked line with a directional arrow. A visual flight path segment appears as a thick dashed line with a directional arrow, visual flight path. IFs are charted IF when associated with a nav aid or when freestanding. The missed approach holding pattern track is represented with a thin, dashed line. When collocated, the missed approach holding pattern and procedure turn holding pattern are indicated as a solid, black line. Arrival holding patterns are depicted as thin, solid lines. Terminal arrival area TAA, the design objective of the TAA procedure is to provide a transition method for arriving aircraft with GPS slash run of equipment. TAAs also eliminate or reduce the need for feeder routes, departure extensions, and procedure turns or course reversal. The TAA is controlled airspace established in conjunction with the standard or modified run of approach configurations. The standard TAA has three areas, straight in, left base, and right base. The arc boundaries of the three areas of the TAA are published portions of the approach, and allow aircraft to transition from the on-route structure direct to the nearest IF. When crossing the boundary of each of these areas or when released by ATC within the area, the pilot is expected to proceed direct to the appropriate waypoint IAF for the approach area being flown. A pilot has the option in all areas of proceeding directly to the holding pattern. The TAA has a T structure that normally provides a no procedure turn, no PT, for aircraft using the approach. Figure 1 to 12, the TAA provides the pilot and air traffic controller with an efficient method for routing traffic from the on route to the terminal structure. The basic T contained in the TAA normally aligns the procedure on runway centerline with the missed approach point, MAP, located at the threshold, the FAF 5 nautical miles from the threshold, and the intermediate fix, if 5 nautical miles from the FAF. In order to accommodate descent from a high on route altitude to the initial segment altitude, a hold in lieu of a procedure turn provides the aircraft with an extended distance for the necessary descent gradient. The holding pattern constructed for this purpose is always established on the center IF waypoint. 
Other modifications may be required for parallel runways or special operational requirements. When published, the RENAV chart depicts the TAA through the use of icons representing each TAA associated with the RENAV procedure. These icons are depicted in the plan view of the approach, generally arranged on the chart in accordance with their position relative to the aircraft's arrival from the on-route structure. .dnegelDNAAATAERLAVIRRLANIMRETFONGISEDTCISB. 21-1-ERUGIF. Course reversal elements in plan view and profile view course reversals included in an IAP are depicted in one of three different ways, a 45 degrees slash 180 degrees procedure turn, a holding pattern in lieu of procedure turn, or a teardrop procedure. The maneuvers are required when it is necessary to reverse direction to establish the aircraft inbound on an intermediate or final approach course. Components of the required procedure are depicted in the plan view and the profile view. The maneuver must be completed within the distance and the minimum altitude specified in the profile view. Pilots should coordinate with the appropriate ATC facility relating to course reversal during the IAP. Procedure turns A procedure turn barbed arrow indicates the direction or side of the outbound course on which the procedure turn is made. Figure 1 to 13, headings are provided for course reversal using the 45 degrees procedure turn. However, the point at which the turn may be commenced, and the type and rate of turn is left to the discretion of the pilot. Some of the options are the 45 degrees procedure turn, the racetrack pattern, the teardrop procedure turn, or the 80 degrees slash 260 degrees course reversal. The absence of the procedure turn barbed arrow in the plan view indicates that a procedure turn is not authorized for that procedure. A maximum procedure turn speed of not greater than 200 knots indicated airspeed, KIAS, should be observed when turning outbound over the IAF and throughout the procedure turn maneuver to ensure staying within the obstruction clearance area. The normal procedure turn distance is 10 nautical miles. This may be reduced to a minimum of 5 nautical miles where only Category A or helicopter procedure turn altitude begins after the aircraft is established on the inbound course. The procedure turn is not required when the symbol no PT appears, when radar vectoring to the final approach is provided, when conducting a timed approach, or when the procedure turn is not authorized. Pilots should contact the appropriate ATC facility when in doubt if a procedure turn is required. Holding in lieu of procedure turn A holding pattern in lieu of a procedure turn may be specified for course reversal in some procedures. Figure 114. In such cases, the holding pattern is established over an intermediate fix, if, or a FAF. The holding pattern distance or time specified in the profile view must be observed. Maximum holding airspeed limitations as set forth for all holding patterns apply. The holding pattern maneuver is completed when the aircraft is established on the inbound course after executing the appropriate entry. If cleared for the approach prior to returning to the holding fix and the aircraft is at the prescribed altitude, additional circuits of the holding pattern are neither necessary nor expected by ATC. If pilots elect to make additional circuits to lose excessive altitude or to become better established on course, it is their responsibility to advise ATC upon receipt of their approach clearance. When holding in lieu of a procedure turn, the holding pattern must be followed, except when radar vectoring to the final approach course is provided or when no PT is shown. Teardrop procedure When a teardrop procedure turn is depicted and a course reversal is required, unless otherwise authorized by ATC, this type of procedure must be executed. Figure 115, the teardrop procedure consists of departure from an IF on the published outbound course followed by a turn toward and intercepting the inbound course at or prior to the intermediate fix or point. Its purpose is to permit an aircraft to reverse direction and lose considerable altitude within reasonably limited airspace. Where no fix is available to mark the beginning of the intermediate segment, it shall be assumed to commence at a point 10 nautical miles prior to the FAF. When the facility is located on the airport, an aircraft is considered to be on final approach upon completion of the penetration turn. However, the final approach segment begins on the final approach course 10 nautical miles from the facility. The profile view The profile view is a depiction of the procedure from the side and illustrates the vertical approach path altitudes, headings, distances and fixes. Figures 1 to 10, 1 to 11, and 1 to 20 12. The view includes the minimum altitude and the maximum distance for the procedure turn, altitudes over prescribed fixes, distances between fixes, and the missed approach procedure. The profile view aids in the pilot's interpretation of the IAP. The profile view is not drawn to scale. 
figures 1 to 10, 1 to 11, 1 to 12, and 1 to 16, the precision approach glide slope, G's, intercept altitude is a minimum altitude for G's interception after completion of the procedure turn, illustrated by an altitude number and zigzag line. It applies to precision approaches, and except where otherwise prescribed, also applies as a minimum altitude for crossing the FAF when the G's is inoperative or not used. Precision approach profiles also depict the G's angle of descent, threshold crossing height, TCH, and G's altitude at the outer marker, OM. For non-precision approaches, a final descent is initiated and the final segment begins at either the FAF or the final approach point, FAP. The FAF is identified by use of the Maltese cross symbol in the profile view. Figure 111, when no FAF is depicted, the final approach point is the point at which the aircraft is established inbound on the final approach course. Figure 116, step-down fixes in non-precision procedures are provided between the FAF and the airport for authorizing a lower minimum descent altitude, MDA, after passing an obstruction. Step-down fixes can be identified by NAVAID, NAVAID fix, waypoint, or radar and are depicted by a hash-marked line. Normally, there is only one step-down fix between the FAF and the map, but there can be several. If the step-down fix cannot be identified for any reason, the minimum altitude at the step-down fix becomes the MDA for the approach. However, circling minimums apply if they are higher than the step-down fix minimum altitude, and a circling approach is required. The visual descent point VDP is a defined point on the final approach course of a non-precision straight and approach procedure. A normal descent from the MDA to the runway touchdown point may be commenced, provided visual reference is established. The VDP is identified on the profile view of the approach chart by the symbol V. Figure 112, the map varies depending upon the approach flown. For the ILS, the map is at the decision altitude slash decision height, DA slash DH. For non-precision procedures, the pilot determines the map by timing from FAF when the approach aid is away from the airport, by a fix or nav aid when the navigation facility is located on the field, or by waypoints as defined by GPS or VOR slash DME RNAV. The pilot may execute the map early, but pilots should, unless otherwise cleared by ATC, fly the IAP as specified on the approach plate to the map at or above the MDA or DA slash DH before executing a turning maneuver. A complete description of the map appears in the pilot briefing section. Figure 116, icons indicating what is to be accomplished at the map are located in the profile view. When initiating a missed approach, the pilot is directed to climb straight ahead, for example, climb to 2000, or commence a turning climb to a specified altitude, for example, climbing right turn to 2000. In some cases, the procedure directs the pilot to climb straight ahead to an initial altitude, then turn or enter. S E R U T A E F W E I V E L F I O R P P A I E R O M. 61 to 1 E R U G I F. A climbing turn to the holding altitude, for example, climb to 900, then climbing right turn to 2500 direct ABC VOR and hold. When the map specifies holding at a facility or fix, the pilot proceeds according to the missed approach track and pattern depicted on the plan view. An alternate map may also be issued by ATC. The textual description also specifies the nav aids or radials that identify the holding fix. The profile view also depicts minimum, maximum, recommended, and mandatory block altitudes used in approaches. The minimum altitude is depicted with the altitude underscored. On final approach, aircraft are required to maintain an altitude at or above the depicted altitude until reaching the subsequent fix. The maximum altitude is depicted with the altitude overscored, and aircraft must remain at or below the depicted altitude. Mandatory altitudes are depicted with the altitude both underscored and overscored, and altitude is to be maintained at the depicted value. Recommended altitudes are advisory altitudes and are neither over nor underscored. When an over or underscore spans two numbers, a mandatory block altitude is indicated, and aircraft are required to maintain altitude within the range of the two numbers. Figures 1 to 11 and 1 to 12, the vertical descent angle, VDA, found on non-precision approach charts provides the pilot with information required to establish a stabilized approach descent from the FAF or step-down fix to the TCH. Figure 117, pilots can use the published angle and estimated or actual ground speed to find a target rate of descent using the rate of descent table in the back of the TPP. Landing minimums The minimums section sets forth the lowest altitude and visibility requirements for the approach, whether precision or non-precision, straight inner circling, or radar vectored. When a fix is incorporated in a non-precision final segment, 
Two sets of minimums may be published depending upon how the fix can be identified. Two sets of minimums may also be published when a second altimeter source is used in the procedure. The minimums ensure that final approach obstacle clearance is provided from the start of the final segment to the runway or map, whichever occurs last. The same minimums apply to both day and night operations unless different minimums are specified in the notes section of the pilot briefing. Published circling minimums provide obstacle clearance when pilots remain within the appropriate area of protection. Figure 118, minimums are specified for various aircraft approach categories based upon a value 1.3 times the stalling speed of the aircraft in the landing configuration at maximum, certified gross landing weight. If it is necessary to maneuver at speeds in excess of the upper limit of a speed range for a category, the minimums for the next higher category should be used. For example, an aircraft that falls into category A, but is circling to land at a speed in excess of 91 knots, should use approach category B minimums when circling to land. Figure 119, the minimums for straight in and circling appear directly under each aircraft category. Figure 119, when there is no solid division line between minimums for each category on the rows for straight in or circling, the minimums apply to the two or more categories. The terms used to describe the minimum approach altitudes differ between precision and non-precision approaches. Precision approaches use DH, which is reference to the height above threshold elevation, HAT. Non-precision approaches use MDA, reference to feet MSL. The MDA is also reference to hat for straight in approaches, or height above airport, HAA, for circling approaches. On Aeronav products charts, the figures listed parenthetically are for military operations and are not used in civil aviation. Visibility figures are provided in statute miles or runway visual range, RVR, which is reported in hundreds of feet. RVR is measured by a transmissometer, which represents the horizontal distance measured at points along the runway. It is based on the sighting of either high-intensity runway lights or on the visual contrast of other targets, whichever yields the greater visual range. RVR is horizontal visual range, not slant visual range, and is used in lieu of prevailing visibility in determining minimums for a particular runway. It is illustrated in hundreds of feet if less than a mile, i.e., 24 is an RVR of 2,400 feet. Figures 1-19 to and 1-20. to Visibility figures are depicted after the DA slash DH or MDA in the minimum section. If visibility in statute miles is indicated. Dot DNEGELEL phi or PPAI. 8 1 to 1 ERUGIF. RVR. ELB a TETR TNECSED. 9 1 to 1 ERUGIF. Dot AT a D A M I N I M G N I D N L S M R E T zero two to one E R U G I F an altitude number hyphen and a whole or fractional number appear, for example, five hundred thirty to one, which indicates five hundred thirty feet MSL and one statute mile visibility. This is the descent minimum for the approach. The RVR value is separated from the minimum altitude with a slash such as 106524, which indicates 1065 feet MSL and an RVR of 2400 feet. If RVR is prescribed for the procedure, but not available, a conversion table is used to provide the equivalent visibility in this case, of half statute mile visibility. Figure 120, the conversion table is also available in the TPP. When an alternate airport is required, standard IFR alternate minimums apply. For aircraft other than helicopters, Precision approach procedures require a 600 feet ceiling and two statute miles visibility. Non-precision approaches require an 800 feet ceiling and two statute miles visibility. Helicopter alternate minimums are a ceiling that is 200 feet above the minimum for the approach to be flown and visibility of at least one statute mile, but not less than the minimum visibility for the approach to be flown. When a black triangle with a white O appears in the notes section of the pilot briefing, it indicates non-standard IFR alternate minimums exist for the airport. Then alternate if a NA appears after the A, minimums are not authorized. This information is found in the beginning of the TPP. In addition to the copter approaches, instrument-equipped helicopters may fly standard approach procedures. The required visibility minimum may be reduced to one-half the published visibility minimum for Category A aircraft, but in no case may it be reduced to less than one-quarter mile or 1,200 feet RVR. Two terms are specific to helicopters. Height above landing, HAL, means height above a designated helicopter landing area used for helicopter IAPS. 
Point in space approach refers to a helicopter eye up to a map more than 2,600 feet from an associated helicopter landing area. Airport sketch slash airport diagram prior to all flights, pilots should take the time and study the airport layout for all of the airports that they intend to land, including those that may be used as an alternate. During the flight planning phase, study the taxi procedures for the departure airport and landing procedures for the arrival airport. The expected taxi route should be checked against the airport diagram or taxi chart, and special attention should be given to the unique or complex intersections along the taxi route. Pilots should identify critical times and locations on the taxi route, for example, transitioning through complex intersections, crossing intervening runways, entering and lining up on the runway for takeoff, and approaching and lining up on the runway for landing. By knowing the layout of the airport and their particular procedures, pilots are able to anticipate, understand, and safely execute all ATC directives and procedures. A major contributor to runway incursions is pilots not knowing the airport layout and procedures. This lack of situational awareness causes unnecessary accidents that can be avoided by proper flight planning. The FAA believes that following the aircraft's progress on the airport diagram to be sure that the instructions received from ATC are being followed is one of the key procedures in reducing runway incursions. To do this, pilots must take the time prior to the flight to study all procedures so that they are not trying to learn about the airport while they are receiving ATC instructions. The airport sketch, located on the bottom of the chart, includes many helpful features. IAPS for some of the larger airports devote an entire page to an airport diagram. Airport sketch information concerning runway orientation, lighting, final approach bearings, airport beacon, and obstacles all serve to guide the pilot in the final phases of flight. See Figure 121 for a legend of airport diagram slash airport sketch features, see also Figure 110 for an example of an airport diagram. The airport elevation is indicated in a separate box at the top left of the airport sketch. The touchdown zone elevation, TDZE, which is the highest elevation within the first 3,000 feet of the runway, is designated at the approach end of the procedure's runway. Beneath the airport sketch is a time and speed table when applicable. The table provides the distance and the amount of time required to transit the distance from the FAF to the map for selected ground speeds. The approach lighting systems and the visual approach lights are depicted on the airport sketch. White on black symbols are used for identifying pilot controlled lighting, PCL. Runway lighting aids are also noted, for example, real, pearl, as is the runway centerline lighting, RCL. Figure 122 The airport diagram shows the paved runway configuration in solid black, while the taxiways and aprons are shaded gray. Other runway environment features are shown, such as the runway identification, dimensions, magnetic heading, displaced threshold, arresting gear usable length and slope. In operative components certain procedures can be flown with inoperative components. According to the inoperative components table, for example, an instrument landing system, ILS, approach with a malfunctioning medium intensity approach lighting system with runway alignment indicator lights, MALS or equals MALS with rail, can be flown if the minimum visibility is. Dot M A R G A I D D N A D N E G E L T R O P R I A. 1 2 to 1 E R U G I F. Dot D N E G E L G N I T H G I L H C A O R P P A. 2 2 to 1 E R U G I F. Increased by 1 quarter mile. Figure 123, a note in this section might read An operative table does not apply to ALS or hurl runway 13 liters. Run of instrument approach charts to avoid unnecessary duplication and proliferation of approach charts, approach minimums for unaugmented GPS, wide area augmentation system, WAAS, local area augmentation system, LAAS, are published on the same approach chart as lateral navigation slash vertical navigation, nav slash buff. Other types of equipment may be authorized to conduct the approach based on the minimum notes in the front of the TPP approach chart books. Approach charts titled RUN of RWI-20 may be used by aircraft with navigation systems that meet the required navigational performance, RNP, values for each segment of the approach. Figure 124, the chart may contain as many as four lines of approach minimums, Global Landing System, GLS, WAS and LAWS, LAV slash BNAV LAV and Circling. LAV slash BNAV is an instrument approach with lateral and vertical guidance with integrity limits similar to barometric vertical navigation, borrow NAV. Run of procedures that incorporate a final approach step down fix may be published without vertical navigation on a separate chart also titled Run of. 
During a transition period when GPS procedures are undergoing revision to a new title, both RUNAV and GPS approach charts and formats are published. ATC clearance for the RUNAV procedure authorizes a properly certificated pilot to utilize any landing minimums for which the aircraft is certified. Chart terminology changes slightly to support the new procedure types. 1. DA replaces the term DH. DA conforms to the international convention where altitudes relate to MSL and heights relate to AGL. DA will eventually be published for other types of IAPS with vertical guidance, as well. DA indicates to the pilot that the published descent profile is flown to the DA, MSL, where a missed approach is initiated if visual references for landing are not established. Obstacle clearance is provided to allow a momentary descent below DA while transitioning from the final approach to the missed approach. The aircraft is expected to follow the missed approach instructions while continuing along the published final approach course to at least the published runway threshold waypoint or map, if not at the threshold, before executing any turns. 2. MDA continues to be used only for the nav and circling procedures. 3. TCH has been traditionally used in precision approaches as the height of the G's above threshold. With publication of nav slash nav minimums and rim descent angles, including graphically depicted descent profiles, TCH also applies to the height of the descent angle, or glide path, at the threshold. Unless otherwise required for larger type aircraft that may be using the IAP, the typical TCH is 30 to 50 feet. The minima format changes slightly, 1. Each line of minima on the run of IAP is titled to reflect the run of system applicable, for example, LPV, LAV slash NAV, and LAV. Circling minima is also provided. 2. The minima title box also indicates the nature of the minimum altitude for the IAP. For example, DA is published next to the minima line title for minimum supporting vertical guidance, and MDA is published where the minima line supports only lateral guidance. During an approach where an MDA is used, Descent below MDA is not authorized. 3. Where two or more systems share the same minima, each line of minima is displayed separately. For more information concerning government charts, the AeroNav products can be contacted by telephone or via their internet address at National Aeronautical Navigation Products, AeroNav Products, telephone 800 626 3677 www.aeronav.fa.gov. Figure 123. IAP and Operative Components Table. Dot STRAHCHCAORPP at TNEMURTSNIVANR. 42 to 1 ERUGIF.